In the Owensboro Fire Department, uh, we period periodically review all of our programs and we want to make sure that our community outreach is reaching everybody. We embrace the diversity of our community and we want to make sure that our safety message is getting across to our community as a whole. So recently when we uh, uh, reviewed our programs, we thought we could strengthen our relationship with the ref refugee communities. Uh, and that was twofold. One, we wanted to make sure that we understand their culture and how they receive messages so we know how to get those messages to them so they can understand them. So we embarked on this program and Captain James Howard um, took this on, championed this program with great energy and passion. And I'm gonna turn this over to him as we partnered with the international community to uh, embark on this program and it's still ongoing. Captain Howard. As the chief said, uh, Captain James Howard with the Lonesboro Fire Department. Uh, first of all, thank you all for giving me just a few minutes to talk to you uh, at lunchtime about uh, cultural engagement with Lonesboro's refugee communities. And we really are, as the chief alluded uh, to, we're talking about a public safety partnership that is taking place, partnering the International Center of Lonesboro with the Lonesboro Fire Department. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, the important, most important partnership is having our responders uh, be a stronger partnership and better neighbors with the refugees that are out there in our community. Uh, so to begin with, uh, about three and a half years ago, I responded with my engine company to an upstairs apartment uh, near Brescia. There was a lady with pregnancy problems, and she was a Burmese refugee, and we were all far from being able to understand her, and she was far from being able to understand us as EMTs trying to assess her and her problems. Uh, the ambulance came, we loaded her up, really not sure still uh, the extent of her problems and what could be done for her, uh, knowing that there would have to be some, somebody who could speak her language at the hospital later to take care of that part of it. Uh, I got home the next morning and my wife was pregnant with our little Sophie Claire, who's three now, and we fortunately never had uh, the kind of problems this, this lady had where she had to call an ambulance. Uh, but it really stuck with me, and, uh, and I dwelled on it a lot as far as if my wife and I needed that kind of help and the only people that could give us help couldn't understand a word that we had to say and vice versa. So uh, like I said, that kind of stuck with me and I kind of had it in the back of my mind like I'd like to have a vehicle to be able to do something about it. Uh, and I, was, I definitely had the motivation. I was just looking for those opportunities. Uh, the past two years I've been in a, a leadership development program with the National Fire Academy. It's called the Managing Officer Program and it's four weeks on campus there in Maryland, uh, but one of the components of it is a capstone project, and I had to identify something actionable that I could do in the community. And uh, so that became the opportunity for me to finally do something with the ideas and the passion that I'd had uh, for this project. So, uh, you know, I look a lot at our, our vision, our mission for our department, like what, what we're doing there and what we can do for our community to make them safer and, uh, and be a better fire department. And uh, better stewards of the public trust. And there are several things that, that we have as values uh, in the fire service, but they all boil down to me, uh, to two passions that I have myself, which are ethics and customer service. Uh, those are values and passions that I share with Chief Mitchell and also with the uh, people that I've worked with on the International Center of Lonesboro uh, while doing this project. Uh, so I identified refugees as an at-risk population, not just because of my experience with the language barrier, but more broadly than that, the cultural barrier and the lifestyle differences that could actually pose them risks, whether it, it's the way that they cook, uh, how they handle their pregnancies, uh, and sometimes their births within the home. Uh, so to me, it was a no-brainer as far as an area where we could actually make some progress and make uh, people in our community safer. Uh, so whenever I went to Chief Mitchell with this, to be honest, he jumped at it. He was probably more enthusiastic about me doing this than than the enthusiasm that I brought to to begin with, but that made me more enthusiastic. And uh, he, was, he was really eager and, uh, and he's like, you gotta meet with uh, Suzanne Bartlett and gave me contact information. And I was like, great, I was off to the, off to the races basically. Uh, I've been fortunate every step of the way to have really enthusiastic partners, to be honest. Uh, so I developed a plan even before I met with uh, Ms. Bartlett and then fleshed it out. Uh, but my plan was first of all, to get educated about the reality and challenges of the <coughs> refugee community to know who we're dealing with, what their experiences are, uh, to know where those uh, service gaps or even duplication of services might exist, which I know are, are important to you guys when you're making your decisions. 
Uh, secondly, I wanted to bring that wisdom back to our first responders and have that information uh, come to us and raise awareness with the firefighters uh, so we can actually use that out on the street and uh, build those uh, relationships. Uh, third, uh, going back to the refugee neighborhoods with a fire and home safety message like uh, Chief Mitchell referenced. Uh, so not just bringing the International Center and, and what they have to teach us to the fire department, but then going back out in the field and presenting that uh, our fire safety message to that community. And lastly, building a lasting partnership with the International Center and with the refugee communities that's going to make us safer as responders. A little bit of selfish, it's not completely altruistic. So we're safer as responders, the people that I'm responsible for there at the station, and it's going to make the community safer as we uh, work together uh, as we go forward. So the first step, uh, I met with uh, Suzanne Bartlett, who I'll be introducing here in just, uh, just a few minutes when I'm uh, done speaking. Uh, I met with her, and I really did get an education. It was great. Uh, she is so passionate about her job. Uh, she administers a, a grant to help with resettlement for refugees after they get off the plane uh, and come into our community. Uh, learned a lot uh, from her. Anytime I've ever done anything wrong is because I didn't listen to her as far as this program goes, to be honest. Uh, so after I got all the information from her, I mean, she was so happy to, to come and help and meet us out at our drill tower. Everybody's familiar with the, uh, our training center right there in the middle of town, 14th of JR. Uh, she came out, she brought uh, a member of the Burmese refugee community, a member of the Somali refugee community, came out, just had basically an information session, talked to our firefighters uh, there at our training center. It was great, uh, really at, at raising awareness and soliciting questions that helped uh, helped our firefighters understand better what the refugees are, understand the difference between refugees and immigrants, just really trying to understand that community and what puts them at risk and what we can expect from them and what we should lead them to expect from us. Uh, as you can see, there's some uh, literature up there that, uh, that she had brought that day and handed out some really good stuff. Uh, so after that, we went out into the refugee community. We set up a meeting at First Christian Church, and I'll say, uh, Suzanne really did a lot of the legwork and the logistics. She knew where we needed to go, who we needed to target, and how to get those, that audience into the room uh, for the meetings. I mean, she's really been great. So you can see there's our first meeting. And to be honest, to, when we started out having these meetings, I bit off more than I could chew. Once again, it was always because I didn't listen to Suzanne. So uh, we, as you'll see, like we go through, we had additional meetings. Uh, this is an example of a flyer that she would send out, kind of telling them what to expect at the meetings. But as we went, uh, went along, we refined our approach, and we've, we're getting better and better at, uh, at providing this information to the Burmese community every time we do this. Uh, you can see the flyer that Suzanne sends out. Uh, you can see the smoke detector. She has the, they know that they're going to learn something about exit drills in the home and some fire safety things for the home. But beyond that, she, uh, our message, our joint message, uh, goes into appliance safety, electrical safety, a lot of different issues. And even in that first meeting, we had someone come and uh, speak to them about, about pregnancy, and that's something I'd like to target into the future with those groups. Uh, just like I said, kind of knowing what the expectations are on both sides. Uh, so after that meeting at First Christian Church, which focused primarily on that the community that lives there uh, just east of Brescia, we had uh, in those apartments, we had a, there was a meeting on Time Drive, uh, at Lourdes for the group that lives there, Time Drive, Chuck Ray Court area. Uh, that happened in December. Uh, and just last month, we met on Dix, uh, Dixiana Court with uh, several members of that community. And that was actually in someone's living room rather than at a, at a church. Uh, and I'd like to thank First Christian Church and uh, Lady of Lourdes too, because I mean, they, they really let us use the venues and uh, were very helpful. But I, the best meeting that we've had so far, I feel like was in the living room with people sitting on the floor, like meeting literally where they live. Uh, our future plans, uh, we still have a couple of uh, neighborhoods that we haven't hit yet. You have the refugees that live out on Town Square Court, and then you have uh, some that are in Lansdowne. And you know, whenever you have these minority communities, it's not unusual for them to cluster in certain areas. So uh, our, our task here is to, like I said, go out there and meet them where they live. Uh, th these pictures are, you can see, like the folks, that's there on Dixiana Court where they are gathered in our living room. Uh, like I said, I, I had uh, pie in the sky ideas about presenting some big program on a big screen and all that at First Christian Church and really having something overwhelming. Uh, but I found, uh, I found that I didn't listen to Suzanne and the, the more I have, the better we've gotten at this. So uh, you can see we bring the trucks out, let the kids see them, let them get more comfortable and remove the mystery from what we 
from what we do and what we have to use when we come to help them. Hello everybody, Dave here again, cooking with a firefighter. Uh, today we're going to have uh, chicken pot pie for lunch and I'm making double. So actually each, each part of this recipe would probably feed eight adults. All right, we're going to start out by just getting some stuff ready. These are frozen potatoes and we're going to put half in each one because again I'm making two. So that's about a pound in each one. And this is frozen mixed vegetables. That one is two pounds, and it will get three, or approximately three. In each one of these goes one cup of a chicken broth. And a little bit of garlic. And some of uh, the seasoning that I like. Pop both of these in an oven. And that's just to get it warming up while everything else is going. So when you put it all together, it goes a little faster. All right, each one of these is gonna get cream of mushroom and cream of chicken. But it'll be half of a mushroom in each one. So if you were making this at home, you would use one of the small cans probably, unless you really like mushrooms. And for the ease of the meal, the chicken is going to be chicken breast and I got some thighs. That way we do have a little bit of the dark meat in there, but if you use a whole chicken, it's awful hard to get all the bone out, especially doing it for a show when the chicken's hot. So then I'm gonna add the other half so it would work out to each one getting two of the large cans. And we're gonna go on and get both of these warming up. Next, we'll get our chicken ready. Convenient sake. And I'm gonna go on and pull the skin off. Just save myself a step and it all comes out. As far as the amount of chicken for this recipe, like I said, these are kind of made to, to feed eight adults. So it's got a lot of chicken in it. But 
much, you probably want to figure it at about a half a pound per person. season this before we cook it. A little bit of garlic again. And this is actually a pressure canner that we use as a pressure cooker because there's proportion wise. and it will speed up the cooking process quite a bit. We'll have all that chicken done in a, about 30 minutes once it starts steaming. Our chicken should be finished. So now we've got to get it ready and in bite-sized pieces. other stuff out.
and this is where you can kind of check your consistency. Tiny bit of cornstarch because nobody likes a pot pie that just goes everywhere. Season it. Decided is that people like the crust on the bottom to be a little thicker, so we're actually going to use a pizza crust.
Okay, our pizza crust should be pretty close to ready, so we're gonna go on and pull them. And each one gets its bowl of the filling. We've got the oven set at a, around 375. And since we already had the vegetables and the cream of soups warmed up, that's gonna make it so this doesn't have to cook as long in order to make all that hot. And that way your crust doesn't get overcooked. All right, they have baked and it has been about 35 minutes. Pull some out and see how we did. Yikes. That is our lunch for today.